this presentation is on the environmental research in our ports and harbors, science working with the maritime industry, and it deals specifically with port and ballast water baselines using ecological and microbiological and eDNA approaches. I am uh, Benjamin Vallejo Jr., the program leader of this research program. The program is called SAILS, which is the uh, anti-fouling and ballast water management research program for the Philippine maritime industry. And we are having two components at the moment. First is the port and ballast water baselines using the ecological and eDNA approaches, which we call PORTEC. And the key personnel here is Assistant Professor Melody Ocampo of UP Manila, Professor Marilyn Balolong of UP Manila, and Professor Ian Fontanilla of UP Diliman. And for the other component, the ballast water treatment technologies, uh, yours truly is uh, the project head. And with me is engineer Jacqueline Antolijao Deshartin of the University of Cebu uh, Naval Engineering and Mar uh, Naval Architecture and, and Naval Engineering Department. The funding of this project is from the DOSD shared with uh, a private partner contribution from the International Container Terminal Systems Incorporated or ICTSI. The overview of the program is this. The country acceded to the IMO Ballast Water Management and anti fouli Conventions on June 8th of 2018. And the IMO has guidelines prescribed in its uh, circulars, BWMC G7 and G14. This obliges the Philippines to ensure that its sports and maritime transport industry is compliant with the convention so it can lessen the risk of biological invasion public health threats, and the transport and translocation of harmful marine organisms and pathogens. But before we go in further, why do we need to know about port ecology? Well, aside from the IMO environmental conventions, which the country has acceded to, we have acceded to around 28 of the IMO conventions. But for our interest here, we're going to focus on the 2001 uh, Anti-Fouling Convention and the 2004 International Convention on the Control and Management of ship, Ships, Ballast Water, and Sediments. These are the two, con the two major environmental problems that may affect biodiversity around the world because uh, ships can translocate invasive species to other ports and other marine environments, thus causing possible irreplaceable ecological and environmental impacts. So the Ballast Water Management Convention is now in force with 30 countries uh, acceding to it. And the convention entered into global force on 8th September of 2017. And we acceded to the convention on 8th June 2018. Now, the convention in a nutshell requires that all of our ships should be co compliant to the so-called D2 standard, which means there are levels of microbes and pathogens that could be allowed to be discharged into port waters after treatment. And so all ships have to be built with the, with the equipment that will allow for compliance to the D2 standard. And existing ships would have to be refitted. So we need to comply with this D2 standard, which allows for ships to, to discharge their ballast water in port areas. Well, in the D1 standard, they can do ballast water exchange 200 nautical miles from the destination port. So the D2 standard essentially says that. Uh, Ships should discharge less than 10 viable organisms per cubic meter. And there should be 10 viable organisms per milliliter less than 50 micrometers in size. The indicator microbes for human health standards are the toxicogenic Vibrio cholerae with less than one colony forming unit per 100 milliliters of water 
or one colony forming unit per one gram wet weight of samples. The E. coli should be less than 250 colony forming units per 100 milliliters and intestinal enterococci should be less than 100 colony forming units per 100 milliliters. So that's the, the ballast water guidelines of the D2 standard. So let's look at the port ecological baselines. Now we need to have a baseline so we can, we can assess the impacts of port development, the impact of oil and chemical spills, the impact of routine maintenance of ships in the port like dredging and, and dry docking, Effectivity of ballast water and anti-fouling management and to identify areas in the port in which we can safely discharge ballast water and other, other discharges that are actually part of the shipping operations. So this is just an example of port expansion in Kenya, in Australia, the spoil grounds where the ballast water could be released. And of course, since uh, waterfronts are very important urban environments, therefore there's a need to integrate the port environmental quality with the uh, overall urban environmental quality. So in San Francisco, that is now being one of, applied in one of the major environmental strategies of that city. And we can find a lot of that information in worldharborproject.org. Now, what about sales? Okay, sales focuses on marine ecology, especially in port ecological baselines and eDNA detection and genomic databasing of invasive aquatic species and also indigenous fouling species. For marine public health, we look at the eDNA of pathogenic microbes with possible extension to looking at marine coronaviruses as because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there is a really big possibility that ships may translocate SARS-CoV-2 in different aquatic environments. And of course, there's the maritime industry applications like the ballast water treatment technologies and for anti-fouling. So the sites for sales cortex include the Port of Manila, Cebu, Matnog, Davao Port. And for the next phase, we will expand to Lucena and Nasubu ports. So just to look at what we have done in, we have done about three retrievals of all the sampling equipment to determine port ecological baselines. So we've done it also for Manila Bay. And this is how the equipment would look like the so-called fouling collectors. Uh, from here, we can estimate what kind of foulers are there and uh, identify them and list them down. So most of the species that we get are indigenous, but there are really invasive species. And we identify this. We also collect water for microbi microbiological assays and for the eDNA aspect. So here is we extract the DNA from the water samples and do the electrophoresis. We do that the same thing also for other, other areas like the Kunanan Wharf in the port of Manila, also for Matnog, for the port ecological baselines, we each and every pet, petri dish would have to be examined and counted for potential invasive species. And there are just very many of them because our sample size is quite large. Also in Matnog, we do the water sample collection for metagenomics and eDNA analysis. We also do the same thing for Cebu. Now Cebu has a rather unusual port ecology that's dominated by sponges which it would indicate uh, that the port has fast flowing currents, which sponges are really uh, very suited for. Also, we do the water collection for eDNA also in Cebu. We do the same thing for Davao.
Now, what has the information or the data from these uh, initial surveys result in? For the ecological approach, uh, we already identified some non-indigenous species like hydroides. Okay. Uh, Mitella has been uh, identified as an invasive species before uh, this project started, but we want to find out the magnitude of the biological invasion of Mitella. Mitella is a mussel that was brought in likely by ballast water from ships that came from the Atlantic Ocean. So we have discovered a few of these and we need to find out more and because there's likely that they will be there will be more of these invasive species. So just to show you how they look like under the microscope, Hydroides elegans is invasive, but it is now pantropical. It's found in all tropical countries and the likely origin of this is probably in Northern Asia. So probably it became invasive in the, after World War II when shipping became even more uh, a lot of ships have, were made and they were sailing to different ports carrying cargo and that's probably when hydroides became very invasive around the world ocean. So uh, we identified a, a few but they especially some of them are mussels but we need more studies to look at the more the small the smaller marine invertebrates that may be invasive also. Okay, so we have identified some species. Some of them are indigenous like Anadara. Uh, Brachydontis is an alien species and might be invasive in Manila Bay. And of course, the indigenous Pernaviridis. We have also identified different kinds of worms. In Matnog, it was quite unusual to find corals on the plate. So it's possible that corals may be translocated by ships. The newly recruited corals may be translocated by, by ships so, to, because they could stick into the hull. Hydroides elegance was also recorded in this port. Okay, so we have uh, identified a few. Some of them were sponges and, 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 and bryozoans. And of course, the mollusks and crustaceans. So uh, we have seen a lot of these, okay? and some of them are still unidentified. Perhaps some may be new, new alien species to our country. While some we were able to identify morphologically, like the seahorse which uh, was found in one of the plates in Cebu Harbor. So as you can see, there are a lot of uh, marine invertebrate biodiversity as fowlers in, these, um, in our ports. So there's a possibility that they can be translocated from one port to the other. So there are some crustaceans in Davao and even uh, echinoids. And Arquatula senhusha, we first found it in Davao and the nearest uh, distrib natural distribution of this species is actually in the temperate coasts of China. So probably it was introduced here to a ship that probably docked at the port somewhere in China or in Hong Kong. So here are some worms and more worms, more worms again. <laughs> so for the microbiology, okay, uh, we're, we are still in the process of quantitating the DNA. And while some sequences have been, uh, have been collected, uh, we still need to identify the sequence. We are at that stage at, at the moment. However, the first uh, results would suggest uh, these 
pathogenic bacteria, uh, some of them are possibly sourced from hospital waste or discharges. And a lot of these species, according to Pro Professor Balulong, may be or probably are antibiotic resistant. So if that's the case, then probably they were from hospital waste or discharges. Now for eDNA update for the port ecology for the invertebrate biodiversity, we have around 800 plus genomic sequences determined from reports that I just showed you, but we still have to identify through BLAST what those sequences are. So that will be in the next step, uh, probably in the first quarter of next year. And so we still have these unidentified samples uh, fixed in our in the lab no, to find out exactly what these are. We couldn't identify them morphologically, so we need to, to species barcode them. So all of this information should feed into policy and directions. Now the recommended policy goals for the Philippines to comply with the IMO standards for uh, biofouling and also for ballast water management is that we should come up with an integrated and comprehensive biofouling strategy. And we have suggested that this would be based on biosecurity approaches, which is now being implemented in our country, especially in the agricultural sector. The biofouling strategy minimizes the possible introduction of the invasive alien species with consideration for the expected high biofouling species diversity in port ecological communities in the country. Now, this differentiates us from other ports. Since the country is at the center of marine biodiversity globally, and so we will expect that the biodiversity of fowlers here are just as diverse as any other taxa that we have identified for the center of the center of marine biodiversity. So we know that corals are highly diverse here, the fish are highly diverse here. And so it's not surprising that the biofowlers are also very diverse here. Now, this would give us certain challenges in port ecological management, because if ships would have to know what they could transport from the Philippines to, let's say, going back to Tokyo Harbor. It, so we should have a very comprehensive database of all of these uh, possible species. So when they get to Japan, if the ship gets to Japan and gets uh, assessed for compliance, so easily information can be shared between the Philippines and Japan and identify the possible invasive species that could uh, negatively impact the environment in Japan. Now, the biosecurity approach is consistent with the IMO goals for harmonized international policy. Perhaps if we adopt bio biosecurity approach and most ports around the world would do that, then that would be a harmonized international policy. But of course, we have to establish the legal and policy and institutional arrangements to fulfill all of these. But we need to have a clear definition on what invasive alien species is to the maritime industry because, for example, the arc agriculture has, uh, has its own definition, and that definition may not be completely fit for the maritime industry. So we have to contextualize it. In fisheries, there is also a definition, and also for protected areas management. But in these sectors, the risk should be possibly identified, especially their potential economic impact. For the maritime industry, the risk will be to shipping, port infrastructure, and port environment, and of course, fisheries, because most of the aquaculture are located near ports and harbors. So the context would be an expanded scope of biosecurity that in includes integrally the, or integrates the maritime transport industry aside from agriculture, fisheries, and public health. Now, uh, this whole sales program came out of a small project that was funded by NSRI uh, about uh, seven years ago when we assessed the safe risk area for domestic shipping. We were able to say that uh, there is a huge degree of risk between Manila and Cebu. That's the two parts that we studied because of the different ecologies and environmental conditions of, uh, of those two ports. But even then, we still have to come up with, uh, with metrics to say that 
to quantify the risk of a ship carrying possible invasives from, from Manila to Cebu, for example, and vice versa. Our results for the NSRI project before were pointed out the way for a more um, intensive approach to looking at port ecology. So with that, we need to build capacity for research and implementation. The Philippine Coast Guard Mar Maritime Environmental Protection Command is in charge of um, implementing the standards. The Maritime Industry Authority or Marina is to look at the compliance aspect also. Philippine Ports Authority are where the places where these compliance assessments will be done and also in Cebu Port Authority, including the Subic Bay Port uh, Authorities. And of course, the maritime and port servicing industries would have to be part of this building of capacity because uh, shipping is primarily a, a private enterprise. And a lot of the functions are taken in by private uh, for the corporate sector for maritime and port servicing. So they would be the ones to ensure that the standards are met. So when the ship gets into harbor and the state authorities assess them, then they would pass with flying colors, as we say. So thank you and good day. And if there are any questions, I'll be very willing to take, uh, to take some of your questions. Thank you and good day.